going to ask the, our representatives from um, Tapuni Kōkiri, Hiria Kuntin and Aaron Hemi. I can't read my own writing. Oh, Run Munro. Oh, there you go. I thought my own writing was H. Munro, to really give us a little bit of background about how the Māori media um, sector shift review is going to work, why it is so important, and why we as independents need to have an extremely strong voice in this. Um, so, like, we, uh, just before this hui, we spoke to them about a sit-down conversation around the table with our membership, um, and they have given us two dates, so please, please, guys, come to these hui. They are the most single thing, I believe, as an independent production company and producer that we are facing for the next five to ten years. So um, that is my plea to you, all sitting out here, to actually turn up. Um, with, now, without lecturing you any further, I'd like to introduce um, Heria uh, Quinton, who a lot of you may have read, she's been the face-to-face -face contact or the email contact um, with, with whom you may have had if you've been dealing with this. And then Aaron, is going, Aaron Munro is going to give us a little bit of a background about the, re about the review, how, um, how the process of how it works. I know a lot of people are very interested to know who the review panel are and who is reviewing the review panel and how that works. So he's, he's going here and Hedia will give us a bit of information on that. And um, after that, Kati. So I, is that working, Hedia, that one? Yes. Check. So over to you, Hedia. Kia ora. Uh, Thank you for having us here today, Nga Aho Whakari. Um, we really appreciate the opportunity to be here um, and listen to Kōrero beyond our own kaupapa. Um, I guess a little bit of background about me. I'm Hedi Poynton. I'm a policy manager at Tupuni Kōkiri. I've been tasked with um, pulling together a secretariat that will lead um, this kaupapa called the Māori Media Sector Shift. Um, I've got a team of five um, that's come, so we have some policy experience and some regional experience and hopefully together um, you know, we'll be able to take this cope up where the Minister wants us to go. Um, with me today I've got Aaron Munro who's one of our team and um, Aaron's going to share with you where we've been up to. Kia ora. Huti a te rito. Huti a te rito te hara keke Kai he a te koma ko e ko Ki mai ki a hau He a ha te me anui He a ha te me anui te au Ma kue ki atu, he tangata, he tangata, he tangata hui. A tēnā tātou te whane. A tēnā eau he uri o Ngāti Kahungunu ki te wairua, o Ngāti Konohi hoki, e mihi kawana ki a koutou te whare o Ngā Hofukari. A koutou e huaki mai nā o tātou ki a māuatahi a o te puni kōkiri me tēnei kaupapa no nui, kei wainga nui a tātou katoa. Uh, ai, kia ora, my name's Aaron Munro. Uh, like um, Hedi has said, I'm part of the Secretariat team. Um, although I've worked in Te Puni Kōkiri for the past 10 years, my background's in Māori radio, Iwi Radio, uh, for 13 years as a broadcaster uh, for three different radio stations, so uh, tēnei te mihi atu kia koutou. Um, so yes, uh, as you're well aware, the, uh, our, our Minister for Māori Development, uh, the Honourable Nanaia Mahuta, has entrusted with us, uh, Te Puni Kōkiri, a, um, a review of the Māori media sector, uh, in particular because of the, the rate of technology that's moved so fast, it's looking at whether or not what we currently do to provide uh, te reo Māori content and Māori kaupapa content is still relevant today, or are there areas that we need to look at for the future? Um, it's looking at effective uh, and efficient ways of producing and funding that content, te reo Māori and kaupapa Māori content, also looking at this word collaboration. There's a number of areas that we're looking at uh, currently around content, content delivery, 
Uh, and I'm glad that we, uh, we're here to listen to the conversation around rights and retention because that's an important part of it. And it's also around the current structures that enable that content to be um, produced and delivered. Um, our review started, we, we've actually been on the road um, all of the month of February. We've been engaging with a range of media sector, uh, Māori media sector people, as well as audiences from Kaumata to uh, Rangatahi throughout the country to get their whakaaro around um, what kind of content they currently get, how they like to get it, and what they see in the future. And so we've yeah, gone around the country, we've engaged with Māori media sector, and today was an opportunity for us to come and talk to uh, the screen sector. And um, like uh, Irina was saying, we're giving uh, the membership of Ngāho Whakaari an opportunity to talk directly with us on those two dates, uh, 27th and 28th of this month, where we want to flesh out around your whakaaro, around those two things, content, delivery, retention rights, and even governance. So and independence uh, funding as well, of course. And we also want to look at the alignment with the mainstream media sector as well. So, yeah, that's where we're up to date at the moment. So, um, can you just sort of t maybe give us a little bit of background of, of, of how and why the policy review came up at all? I know I wasn't meant to ask you many questions, that's, but you can answer that one. Um, so, the, I guess the context really was the minister tasked, the minister is keen to ensure that the sector is fit for purpose in the future. That's really what's driving um, our work and our kaupapa, so. Yeah. Gonna, one of the things I used before even, I, like I know we've got Nga Whakari or have got an opportunity to sit with you one-on-one -on -one around the table, but just for the, the wider context of things that there is a review panel that will be, that, that is, is going to then work with you, I understand, and I know you can't give too much information because you don't have that much information about it, but um, it's just, I guess it's, all, it's always, you know, who's looking at the gatekeeper, who's gatekeeping the gatekeeper, I guess, is, is sort of a little bit around that, that area. If you can sort of tell us what the review panel may look like. Kia ora no. um, So the review panel is tasked with um, providing strategic o oversight for the work that we as the Secretariat will be doing. Um, the membership of that panel is, is still being worked through um, with the Minister and Chief Executive. Um, what we do know is that panel will comprise of people with broadcasting experience, uh, with knowledge and understanding of te reo, um, and knowledge and understanding, I guess, yeah, of the broadcasting sector, as well as um, the digital technology sector. Does everyone know the, the, the terms behind the review that, that's here? Do we need, there's a slide apparently you have down there about the, the, um, what, what was asked for the review, the, um, which is, is, there are three main, four main points around the review. Sorry, that's really, I don't know who lit this, but shit, I don't want to employ them, <laughs> that's for sure. Um, is there, can you, have you got that slide? Oh, you're working on it, okay. Oh, Someone. I mean, I can talk to the, the, the six areas really of the, um, of, of particular interest and focus are funding, are the organisational structure, are content, are platforms for delivery, are rights and retention, and the alignment with public, uh, with the public media sector. I guess the thing that we are really cognisant of is that there is a, a bigger review going on of the public media sector, but there are also other reviews that impact on this work um, being done by government at the moment. There's a review of the Copyright Act. There's also um, what's being termed the NALI review, which is a review of national archives and libraries. So that also includes Ngā Taonga. So there's a whole lot going on in the space. Um, it would be really good to um, have feedback from you all. Um, in, in terms of the organisations that are being reviewed, they are? Just in case people don't know. Organisations aren't being reviewed. Um, what's being looked at are those areas. Um, it is not a specific look at any of the organisations at all. Oh, okay. That's a different to what I read, but obviously wrong. So good to have it put straight. Um, 
Just in terms of the, the hui that we have have organised with TPK, is there anything from the floor that that um, people would like, if you can't make that meeting, to be brought up at that hui? Or has anyone got... Uh, the, the TPK really aren't here to answer any burning questions because they sort of can't. Um, but if someone does have a burning question that they want to put forward or a view they would like to put forward so TPK can hear, please take a mic. Kia ora, Mike taking the mic, Mike Rehu, ko uh, um, I Just on this review as well, just more on the timeline. So obviously you're taking submissions at the moment, you're getting feedback from members of the public regarding content. Uh, and so when will we see a manifestation of, well first of all, when will we see results of a review? And then when will the review be reviewed? And then will we see the manifestation of uh, the work that you've done? Because obviously there's a lot of timelines that need to be considered in terms of funding uh, for organisations. Oh, kia ora, Mike. I'll take that one. Um, so the first, I guess the, this, rev this process is quite, quite phased or staged in, in our approach. So uh, the first deliverable is for us a um, report to the Minister that, that describes the current state, essentially. And that's largely been a desktop exercise um, of reviewing material and, you know, a few conversations with some of the sectors, uh, some of the groups in the sector. Where um, that's likely to go to Cabinet um, in the next month. And after that, the next, the next point for us is to develop a suite of high-level options of what the future state could look like. And that is due, or we're anticipating that to go to Cabinet uh, between May and, May and June. Um, and then after that, timeframes are a wee bit more hazy because it will be dependent on what decisions are taken at that point. But in a broad sense, the process will be, uh, so it goes high level options in May to June, and then after that, there'll be some more work to drill down into you know, some preferred options and what those might look like. And then after that, they'll be back to Cabinet again with, um, you know, with that detailed information in order for them to make some decisions about what a future state would look like. And then after that again, there'll have to be some kind of implementation and transition um, but it's all hugely dependent on the decisions taken at each stage. Right. Um, so in terms of expertise uh, in this process, because obviously with the timeline behind you there, we can see that you're three months through a five-month process, and Aaron has referred to his, um, to his radio experience, but when do you think you'll be bringing in people with uh, experience in the broadcast sector, uh, apart from submissions? Um, so, we have been meeting with stakeholder groups the whole way through, Mike. So, we've had meetings um, with Māori Television, with Te Māngai Pāho, with Te Whakaruru Hau, and um, both its executive and its membership. Um, and we'll be meeting again with Ngā Hōwhakaari. So, it's, those conversations will continue. And they'll be, as, as options or potential options are refined, those conversations will just continue. Well, it's our intent and the way we're structuring those conversations that that future perspective, I mean, that's the focus of the conversations. So it's not about the current state. It's about what could it be. So with Ngā Whakaari Hui, for instance, what, that, that will be one of the, our main things we will be talking with TVK over and, and needing to have a firm opinion on as well around, around things like data around things like, you know, where do we see the, the industry? Where, you know, is it, an, is it going to be an industry? What is it going to look like? And are the conversations that we will be having on our round table conversations with them on the, uh, well, the Auckland one again is the 27th at three, and then the one in Rotorua is the following day on the 28th in the morning.
Good point. I, I think it's a good point to, 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 to take up. Yeah, I do. Th it is a good point to take up, but I, I guess I'm mindful too, Mike, that we did have a public submission process that was available for everybody to participate in and to share their views. Um, and, you know, our door is still open. It's, it's not a closed process. Um, we're happy as a secretariat to take inquiries. Kia ora. Martin, yes. Yeah, yeah, um, so a couple of things that concern me is that there's an advisory panel that's been appointed, right? So we're talking about the media sector. I know that we can break those into certain facets, but because the landscape is, has changed astronomically, sort of, you know, it, it's just huge, right? Like we started off with three channels or four channels, and now we've got all these multi-platforms. There's some of us that have been working in this space for some years, and although there are some networks and platforms that are just trying to get their heads around it. We've been doing it for about 10 years, globally, on an international front. So the question is, when we talk about an advisory panel, who is that? That's the first question. What credentials do they have in terms of broadcasting in the media sector? The third thing is, what credentials do they have in broadcasting in a wider landscape in the Māori sector? And um, ultimately, uh, how can some of us who are in that broader space get involved in that advisory capacity to ensure that the future of the Māori broadcasting sector is going to be intact and we can rely on that response and the decisions that you make post the review? It's just that reassurance and that trust. Kia ora. Is there something you'd like to answer later, like the week after on Wednesday with, inside the group? or? You, um, you feel comfortable about answering it. Now, at the moment, my understanding from a conversation earlier with um, Hedia and, and, and with Aaron is the review panel has not been set in place yet. The, uh, and, and that the CEO of Tapuni Kōkiri will be appointing that along, along with conversations with sector groups. No, like, well, we, for sector groups in terms of conversations we might have like next Wednesday with you and Thursday. Okay, so the appointments to the, well, the panel will be convened by the chief executive. Decisions have yet to be taken on the final composition or the membership of that. So there are some names under consideration. Um, we're hoping for those to be finalised in the next couple of weeks. So I'd just be curious if my name's on that. So Martin Cleave. I don't think she's at, at liberty to most I, I probably... I just thought I'd ask the question. Yeah, I know, Marty. Well, anyway, his name is Martin Cleave. She's written it down, Marty. Anyone else should just shout out now <laughs> if they think they should be on that panel. Um, that and, and as we know, Marty is a fantastic advocate for us all. Um, I don't... Is there any other questions from the floor? Because I know like, it's been a hugely busy day. Oh, hold on, the mic's coming to you. Tinny. Oh, Tinny Molyneux. She's the lady, the lady waving your hand here. Thank you, Tinny. Um, kia ora koutou. Uh, kei te tūn horo te te ahua, ko roa e mahi a native te tēnei mahi. Um, I'm probably one of the dinosaurs in this industry. And I just want to go back to when we started um, broadcasting i roto i te reo Māori. Ka ara he kaupapa i tua atu ko te reo Māori. What we were asked to achieve was to make sure that politicians end up speaking Māori in Parliament. We've done that. And the other thing was, make sure you put the reo out on as many platforms as you can. We've done that. And so, in looking at the review, I'd like you to take that into consideration. Mainstream media have many platforms. Why does Māori have to have a review about the platforms they're on. And for me, there's more people coming into the industry, and that's understandable, it's getting bigger, platforms are a lot huger than what they are now, and I think a healthy bit of competition between Māori isn't a bad thing, otherwise you get one perspective of any issue to do with Māori, so you're back in square one from where we were before we even started broadcasting. And, and that, to me, is the issue that I would like addressed. There's a lot of people now going for the same piddly bit of money. And it's, we need, and for, as far as I'm concerned, that you need to look at that and need to look at how we can improve it. Technology's changed, things cost more, 
But we, as people in the industry, have done our job. Norira, kia ora koutou. A tēnā koe, Tini. And with that being said, I think that's a really good note. Oh, no, wait on. There's another down the back there, please. Kia ora. Uh, Ratu Tibble. Um, yeah, I guess uh, I've also watched things evolve over time. And I noted that, what, some almost 20 years ago, there was a commitment to uh, have all staff at MTS speak Māori by the end of 25 years. And you've still got five years to go, and it looks as if the company is uh, looking less and less viable. It's a um, great concern of mine to the, to the degree that I believe it has not met its con performance conditions. And as I understand, even although I've, watched, I've looked at the uh, act itself, um, <clears throat> that uh, one of our great problems is that, uh, in my view, is that Māori should be just compulsory within MTS, no English programs. And uh, where Zeppa is concerned, I think Zeppa should be done by uh, and New Zealand on there together with uh, NZTV 1, 2 and 3. Uh, because one addresses Māori speakers and the other one addresses anybody else who might be interested in things Māori. And that's what Zeppa determines. Zeppa is about those who are waxing and waning, wanting and wishing, dreaming and what have you. On the other hand, MTS is supposed to be dealing to Māori who are Māori speakers whether they're kura kaupapa, uh, any and all of those, uh, punareo, whatever. And um, I think, and the issue is, one is supposedly commercial, and the other one is supposedly social. I would like to imagine that, that MTS was social and not commercial. I don't see any reason in the world why it should be commercial. So the commercial arm can stay with where they practice and issues of commercialism for many, many years. But remember, they were also born of a public duty, not of a commercial duty, in the first instance. So lots of money had been spent on uh, television New Zealand from a perspective of social contribution, not commercial contribution. Over the years, they then transitioned, and that's fair enough. But um, my objection, and I think there, um, we've got many, um, what you call it now, uh, um, houses, production houses. Now, I'm a member of a production, a production house down in uh, Rotorua, and we're very keen to, to believe that we're headed in that direction. Zeppa for the other arm and Māori for the other, for the other arm. Because I think that was the dream in the first place of Waikerepuru and company, that Māori will be brought to the fore. And it doesn't matter whether it's brought through the fore through the English arm or through the Māori arm, but the <coughs> services be divided. At the moment, we've also gone, I listened to uh, broadcasting the other day, which was, um, let's see, that was Larry Parr uh, sitting with uh, Parliament in session. And uh, from what I gather, he is betwixt between, he doesn't know where he's going, and uh, that's fair enough because, because the, the whole institution is in limbo. They don't know <laughs> where they're going, they don't know what they're doing, and they've already set up two programs rounds for the, for the year. So there's not much hope for, for production houses, given that those are the common conditions at the moment. Low performance, low demand, low practice, <coughs> and then the result, net result is non-performance. How can we perform when we haven't any goods to, to perform with? No contracts to perform with. So uh, I don't think it's a good looking picture, <coughs> and, um, and I think it's one that uh, we need to be more determined about because at, at day's end, the government is about supply. And the problem now is that they've divided the, uh, they've divided the Putea in 2.3 million, I think, by 2.6 million. 2.3 for digital and 2.6 for, uh, for broadcasting. And um, I think um, Maori television should take the whole cake, what they've always had. And then digital belongs to a new medium altogether and a new budget altogether. And that's how I see the picture. Kia ora, thank you. I think that brings to the fore funding, which is which is also addressed in the review, is the is 
the funding to be able to achieve what has been asked to, of, of the Māori media sector to achieve in this digital age. We're the only industry, or the, that at present, we're the only um, media sector not to have got an input of funding for the digital age. So our, our funding agency, Te Māngai Pahua, and don't think I'm sticking up for you, Larry, Te Māngai Pahua is, is not being given the money to do what they need to do. Um, and saying that, I'm, Larry, I'd like, is it all right if you just respond to what's been said? Because it was about Te Māngai Pahua's funding rounds. It was about the money side of things, and most probably just a little bit on Zephyr, which a few people may not know what Zephyr is in the room. Is that all right? Um, yeah, I can respond now. Um, I, I, I could leave it until uh, <laughs> I, I'm on the next panel. Like the next session might be... Uh, oh, okay. Uh, okay. Yeah, that's a good idea. We could go have a glass of wine. Um, <laughs> in between... <laughs> nah, just drinks. Anyway, any more questions out there? No? Thank you. Um, Tini, thank you for your your huge uh, knowledge that you just brought forward before. I think that what you did say is, is extremely important for everyone in this room to hear that as a Māori industry, we have achieved what was set down for us to achieve. Now, our goals are to do with te reo, to get it out there, how are we going to do it, how we, are we going to increase our speakers through, the, through broadcasting? And, and what are we going to provide for, for the generation coming forward that is here to, that they actually want to watch? These are going to be the hard questions Māori Television needs to answer, sometimes to Māngai Pā, or more so our channel. What do our people want to watch? So that, and where, how, and when? Um, so they are leaving. Do, uh, do you have anything else, um, TPK, you'd like to? Sorry, listen to me, TPK. Sorry, Hedia and, and Aaron, you'd like to close up, close up on? Uh, tēnā tātou. Um, just in conclusion, thank you very much for allowing us to be part of this forum today. And um, we encourage all our Ngāho Whakaari members to attend the one of the two workshops, 27th and 28th. Um, nō rira tēnē māwe e mihi anei ki o nō māwe te whiwhi. If you're not a member of Na Fakari, go out and join up. Kia ora. Tēnā tātou. Uh, ho mai te paki paki mō tō tātou. <laughs> Manuhiri, uh, Hiria, tēnā koe. Aaron, uh, rātou ko, uh, koutou ko, Nicole.